there, but the um, the mixture cable it kind of needs some help. All right, we've got a Cessna 210 in here today. Uh, had an intermittent alternator issues in flight, so we sent it out to Hartzell for testing, and they didn't even test it. They rejected it on condition only. There's also a pretty good oil leak somewhere in here that we're gonna have to figure out. And I wonder if just being covered in oil made the alternator quit working or made it become intermittent, but we'll figure that out here in a second. All right, there it is. Let's see if I can get this thing to focus. It's hard to get your camera in here. There's oil. Focus is better. There we go, okay. So the crank seal here has got an active leak and that's what is covering the bottom of the cowling and the top of the cowling. And then when you have a leak right up here and you have all this wind, it kind of blows it all the way back. That's why the whole engine's covered in oil. Another thing we noticed is that all the gammy injectors are leaking. That one's leaking really good right there. And one of the ways we noticed it is we saw that line right there, all of that black is coming from this one and it's running down the fins and then going on top of the intake. So, simple alternator swap gets complicated. We need to figure and this is the battery. So the original squat we, he came in for was the electrical system shutting off in flight. This is the battery ground. Look at, it's like it was cut in half. All right, we shot the ground wire for continuity. Um, it reads like one ohm. And then when you move the wire back and forth to expose that opening, and I guess it probably separates some of the torn strands of wire, it goes from one 13 ohms, one ohm. 13 ohms, one ohm. So we're gonna wind up replacing this cable, making it longer so it doesn't look like that. There's probably broken strands in there just covered by heat shrink. Oh, there it goes, yeah. It's coming off now. That bolt to the correct thing. It's not, so we just dug in the parts manual because we determined the alternator that was ordered, which is the correct alternator for the actual plane, won't fit. And that's because this bracket is mounted, it looks like just to the accessory case only. Um, but, but when you look in the parts manual, the bracket definitely mounts to the foot over here to, that goes to the engine mount. And then the alternator sits in that space. This is way too wide. So we have to dig in the log books and see if there is an STC to support. This just looks like a fabricated piece anyways. That, that thing with the holes in it doesn't even. All right, so I actually found it from 2002 installed alternator in accordance with STC, list the STC. I'm glad that this guy put it in here, did the engine run. So now we can probably send the alternator that uh, they ordered back and figure out what alternator goes with that STC. The way that this shows, it's got two different brackets and then going to a mounting bar and then going to the alternator. Um, so the mounting bar is there and I have the two feet off the mounting bar, but it shows two brackets here and what i have installed is one large bracket so this is just uh some of the fun that comes with general aviation okay i went back and reading through it this one line at a time uh the illustration is one method of mounting the alternator other methods may be employed at the discretion of the installing agency provided that installation conforms with the instructions outlined in report 6513 single engine so now we're gonna go there and we're gonna look through it. But I think we're gonna wind up just going back to OEM setup just to make this easier on everyone. It's hard to come into an aircraft that's already been worked on. I was not here when the other alternator was removed. Uh, so I found a picture of the alternator that the STC calls to use. And it's definitely different than what we have. Specifically notice that it has these three mounting bolts here. And then this flange here is much thinner than the one we have. Also notice that it's got a fan right there behind the pulley. Every time I try to record something, the stupid jets take off. Okay, so this is the customer supply part that he got for us. So, like I said, we looked it up in the maintenance manual, and this is what the plane calls out for, but in order to make this work, we're gonna need the correct bracket. As you can see, it's much different than the one we pulled up. 
that goes with the STC. In particular, this is super thick. Um, the bolt that goes into the current mount is the right diameter, but it doesn't go, it doesn't even go through to the other side. Even if we took all the washers off, it wouldn't be long enough. Um, so that's uh, <laughs> it's your typical general aviation stuff. So we're gonna have to figure out this mount. All right, traveling today. I had an issue with their mixture. Uh, they landed here okay, and then they went to take off and the uh, mixture settings got all out of whack. So we're gonna check it out and see what's going on with it. Check that out on the wing walk, that's pretty cool. Haven't seen that before. All right, so we're in the plane. The linkages seem to be working okay for the throttle and the prop governor, but the, um, the mixture cable is gonna need some help. A responsible person would be saving their battery life for this light because the sun's already going down. Um, but that's not me. I'm going to be <laughs> blaring some music. Always remember to take your shoes off, folks, when you're in people's leather planes. And then just take a moment to be grateful that... Always be grateful that the uh, mixture cable is at the bottom of all of this mess right here. And not behind everything. Because then it would really, really stink if this cable was not on the front. There, I have to undo that nut. So we'll undo that nut from the other side and then we can just pull the whole cable, pull the whole cable out the front, slide the new one in and we'll be good to go. All right, we got it out. So now we should just be able to gently tug it free. All right. All right, just line the cables up so I can make sure that they're the same length before I put them in. You'd rather find out that they're different out here than when they're on the plane. It's even cool the new one comes with a reference on a... Oh, you're upside down. It's The new one comes with a, a drawing that you can look up, which makes it a little bit easier. It's a little flexible and it's actually a little bit bigger, so it may be harder to route. But the main thing is that you get this sleeve up and hooked up to the firewall. Anyways, that's all for today. Sun's getting a little low. Got to get this thing buttoned up and he'll be good to go. Okay, we just finished engine runs and this is something that I noticed when we started off, but I wasn't sure. So I sent a text to my coworker and he went in the hangar and looked at a Mooney that we had in there. Um, that right there, that area should have a screw in it with a stop. And that is the stop for full lean. So we should be hitting the stop right now and that should kill the fuel. What's happening though, is that because the throw in the cable is longer, this will keep going past that stop counterclockwise when you pull it out to go lean. And that opens the valve inside the unit enough that fuel flow goes back and starts to increase because it's just a butterfly valve. So right now there's a sweet spot on the cable that kills it, but the issue is um, there's no set screw and there should be. I'll put in pictures after this. Um, so the cable is in it works and uh, we'll need to figure out if we are allowed to put that set screw in there or get uh, get with the Bendix because that's who makes this unit and see what the hardware should be because there's also looks like a polyurethane spacer that goes with the screw that gets safetyed. So that'll be interesting. Um, there is like an internal stop for full rich that it, it is set to and it does hit the stop for full rich but that's where the stop should be for full lean. And let me go pull it out a little bit more so you can see actually how far it goes. So that's where the stop should be. And this cable is going out more than that. And as you can see, that puts us past the stop. Okay, so here's the good unit with the screw, the bushing and everything is safety. One of the reasons we need to reach out to Bendix or an approved overhaul uh, facility for this unit is I don't know if going past the stops um, can actually damage the unit. We'll have to ask that question and then we'll have to determine uh, what the part numbers are that are supposed to go in the hole. If there's a torque, if it gets any kind of Loctite or things like that. But that's all for today. Thank you. The, um, the mixture cable is going to need some help.